All right, my little easy bakers. This is my take on chicken and shrimp carbonara from Olive Garden. You want to start off with a nice deep skillet. Make sure, it depends on how much you're cooking, but you want to make sure that your skillet um, is a stainless steel or an iron skillet because they cook everything evenly. And we're going to be adding quite a few things to this one pot. So you start off with adding your this large pot. You add your chicken. You add your bacon. You're also going to add your shrimp to this as well, as well as your bell peppers. So that's what I'm saying. Make sure that your pot is nice and deep. You don't want to use a thousand pots. Or you can. If you prefer your items to be cooked separately, then go ahead and use another pot. FYI, shrimp. If you want your shrimp to have that nice crispiness to them, or if you want to put them on a grill, that will be awesome sauce with this as well. But it's late. My kids don't care. They just like yum, yum, yum sauce. So this is what we did. I added everything to this pot. And I'm putting it on medium, medium high heat. So everything could get cooked. And once you add, and you guys do not have to use your hands to stir your food. Don't mind me. I just been cooking forever. And... I just like stir it with your hands like <laughs> I'm so different but now it's cooking and I'm definitely gonna add my vegetables to this as well did I add my yes I did okay so I'm gonna add my bell peppers you can add onions bell peppers whatever it is I use bell peppers because that's what Olive Garden use so and I'm just gonna take it make sure everything mixed around it's not gonna take too long to cook because chicken breast doesn't take that long to cook at all and really important you use something that has even cooking because you're you see all this stuff that we have in this pot we want to make sure everything get cooking like how it's supposed to cook right so once that get done it should take nothing but 10 minutes it's going to look a little like this you see everything's completely done your chicken is done you're going to take it oh girl sorry we're going to take it and we're going to add it to your already cooked pasta I'm using spaghetti. You can use linguine, fettuccine, whatever makes you feel special inside your kitchen, your world. Do what the two H double L hockey stick you want to do. Y'all see, I can't even not cuss right. So you're going to combine that together. And that's how it's going to look once you got everything even and combined. I added some more shrimp to get that little crispiness because it was complaining. Now, using that same old good old deep skillet. Add your, we're gonna start our Alfredo sauce. Alfredo sauce is very easy to make. It's nothing but um, butter, heavy cream, Parmesan cheese. That's, re that's really what the essence of Parme um, Alfredo sauce is. You see I'm using this wooden spatula um, spoon to get all of those nits and crannies off the bottom of the skillet. The reason why you want to get all the nips and crannies off the bottom of the skillet is because that's nothing but flavor. Nothing, nothing but flavor. Once your butter melts down a little bit, you're going to add in your garlic. And I did let my garlic cook for about two to three minutes just so it can get that fragrance of garlic. Once that happened, that's when I decided to add <laughs> more bacon. And if this, this yet again is not going to take too long. You're just... You're just making Alfredo sauce. You're going to stir it around a little bit. Then you're going to go ahead and add in, I believe, your your heavy cream. Did I add? Yep, this is what I'm doing. No, I add my flour. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Added my flour. Get a whisk. That's what took me so long. I had to find a whisk. Got a whisk. Whisk that around. I used three tablespoons of flour. I added two first, and I'm whisking that up so I can get that. I won't have too many floury chunks, which is nasty. So you whisk that up and you're going to let that cook just for about a minute or two because you want to get that floury taste. Have you ever been into like had somebody gravy and it was like, mm, tastes a little floury. That's because they ain't let it cook down, chair. That's what it is. Now you know. Now you know. So once you let your flour cook down, you're going to go ahead and add your Parmesan cheese as well as um, heavy cream. There go my one of my heavy creams. Oh, y'all, I'm getting sick. Oh, that's the worst time to get sick is in the summer, ain't it? Ugh. But, yeah, you're going to go ahead and pour in your heavy cream. And you're going to use a lot. It's, 
I last time I made this was I believe January of this year, 2019, because it has a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of dairy in this honey. Very cheesy. But I've turned my stove down just a little bit. Once you start your alfredo sauce as well, I'm sorry that I didn't tell you guys. You want to turn your eye down. Instead of being medium high, make it be a little medium low. And you're also going to turn put in your heavy milk. So I added heavy cream as well as heavy milk into this recipe because that you're going to get a really, it's like a rich Alfredo um, and not anything real simple. So I use a lot of, lot of heavy cream. And I believe that's what Olive Garden does because their, their Alfredo sauce with this is like a really rich Alfredo sauce. You're gonna let that come to a little, a nice little boil. Then you're gonna add just a little bit of salt. I added like one fourth teaspoon of salt because salt is a, is really a flavor enhancer, and whatever you have is gonna draw, is gonna bring out all of your flavors. So I added it until when it came to a little boil, just so it can help me with my garlic flavor and everything like that. Get your pepper whisked thin. Turn your eye down because it's already getting a little thick and you don't want it to overflow. I should have used a bigger pot, but I ain't got time. I ain't got time for all these dishes, girl. Ooh, and I don't even wash dishes, my son do. That's why the stove's so dirty, y'all. Y'all see the stove, he half cleaning, but I ain't gonna get on him. So your your stuff is gonna start to come to a boil. Then this is, <laughs> this is the fun part when your stuff comes to the boil. You're gonna have to like, try to pour it in oh hey that's my butter i'm using for my crumb top so sorry about that but you're gonna try to yep pour it on over there without spilling it and i'm pretty sure there's a better technique but girl ain't nobody got time for all that just put it in there so pour it in there get it all mixed together got my large tongs so i can get it all mixed together and that's all i'm gonna do pour mix it up pour mix it up pour that's all you're doing. Make sure you get all of the little nicks and crannies off the bottom as well. And once that get all mixed in like how it is, you see that it's not too runny. It's not, you know, it's not too overpowering. It's, I believe it's perfect. Everyone that ate it thought it was beautiful as well. So, mm. Now you can leave it right here. You don't, you can stop, you can serve it and you'll be good to go. But what I actually like to do is like to put a crumb coat cheesiness on top of on top of all of this cheese. And that butter that you guys saw in that saucepan, I melted that down. Now this has no heat on it. And I added some Parmesan cheese so, and as well as some mozzarella cheese. I'm also going to add some, like you see, the parsley. And I did a hint of Italian seasoning so it can help with the Italian flavoring. And I added some breadcrumbs as well because that's where I get the little... You can use pico chips. Is really what you should? Pico? Is it pico? Yeah. Is it pico, girl? I don't know. Anyways. But yeah, and that's what you want to do. You want to stir it on on there just until it's combined. You're not cooking it or anything like that because you're going to put it in the oven on broil. I put it on low. But yeah, you, that's how it's going to look. And you're going to take it and you're just going to put it all over your food. And once it get all over your food to the way you like it, it could be a thin layer. It could be a thick layer. I suggest a thin layer because, yeah, <laughs> it don't need to be thick. And it kind of gives you just that little bit of crunch to the pasta. So, and I don't think Olive Garden do this. I'm not sure, but this is what I do. And you're going to put it on broil for about 10 minutes. And it's going to come out nice and crispy and good. And you just serve this. I recommend serving it, you know, with like a nice little cob salad or Caesar salad. And that's it, you guys. Olive Garden at home. As usual, let me know if you want the recipe. I will leave it down in the description box. Bye, you guys.